Today, on November 12th, 2018, Stan Lee died at the age of 95. This is one of those things that we all knew was going to happen. We all thought about it. We know he's old. But it always kind of felt like we'd never get here. This moment would never come, you know? It's weird and surreal to realize that he's gone, but I think the best thing that we can do is to just focus on what he's left behind. I mean, this guy is a legend, a genius. He created things that changed people's lives forever. So I just wanted to sort of commemorate him by talking about some of the awesome things that he did, the things he created, the amazing things that he gave to us, that he put in this world. Say what you will about the guy, but I mean, he created Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man would not exist if it were not for Stan Lee. Spider-Man was the first comic I ever read. It got me into comics. It was the reason that I love comic books. I would probably be an entirely different person without Spider-Man. Would I even still be a nerd? <laughs> yeah, okay, I, I definitely would still be a nerd, for sure. Without a doubt. But a nerd without Spider-Man. Without Peter Parker setting the bar for pursuable men. That's not a world I want to be a part of. But that's not all he created, obviously. That is like one grain of sand compared to the mountain of shit this guy has created and done for the world. Along with Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko, Stan Lee's contributions to the comic book community and the comic book world were massive. He created the Hulk, Doctor Strange, the Fantastic Four, Daredevil, Black Panther, X-Men. Like literally everyone that matters. He's had a cameo in every single Marvel movie to date. He even had a cameo in the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man game. He just loved this community and he loved comic books and he loved his fans. So here in no particular order, I just want to give Stan Lee's top 10 comic books that he ever created. And obviously like he made so many comics that it's impossible to just pick 10, but think of this as more of like his highlight reel. These are all the greats. I looked around at a lot of other lists around the internet to see like what other people were saying. So it's kind of an amalgamation of all of those and my own preferences and just take a journey with me down memory lane at all of the amazing things that Stan Lee has done for this world. Bedlam at the Baxter Building. Fantastic Four annual number three, 1965. Fantastic Four was one of those things that Stan Lee cared about greatly. Like it was his baby. He collaborated with Kirby for 102 issues straight. And it's in there that he did some of his greatest work. This is the story where Reed Richards and Sue Storm get married. Nearly every character in the Marvel Universe is there because it's a huge event, it's a wedding, and it's a celebration, so they brought all the characters together, which was a huge deal. It was kind of a showcase of how gigantic this universe had become and how they could intermingle and have all these crossovers, and it was just really fun. Also, Doctor Doom hypnotizes every single supervillain in New York City to come attack this event, which is just a lot of fun. And I think one of the best parts is that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby are actually characters in this story. They show up and they try to get into the wedding and they're refused entry, so instead they leave and they go back to the office to start working on the next issue, which I think is really funny. And that was something that Stan Lee did a lot. He liked to kind of break the fourth wall, insert himself into his stories, probably why he wants to cameo in every single Marvel movie. It's sort of the same thing. He always likes to play a little cameo, a little Easter egg of himself in his work, which I think is really cool. Number two, The Sinister Six. Amazing Spider-Man annual number one, 1964. This one is just an action-packed thrill ride. It hits the ground running and it never ever stops until the end. Spider-Man is another thing that was one of Stan Lee's babies. It was just his pride and joy. He created Spider-Man. He wrote so much Spider-Man. And in this one, Spider-Man basically takes on every single one of his villains, the Sinister Six. Bam, 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 one right after the other. It's crazy, action-packed, it's awesome. And it's definitely got a very classic beat-em-up comic book feel, but that doesn't mean it's not still one of the greatest comic books ever written. <laughs> number three, the good, the bad, the uncanny. Silver Surfer number four, 1968. Stanley always said that the Silver Surfer was his favorite character, hands down, that he ever created. So obviously, there has to be some Silver Surfer on this list. His writing with the Silver Surfer was a lot more thoughtful and careful, just the way that he wrote it compared to everything else, because he just really cared about this character. And he had a lot to say, and it was really interesting for him to write this sort of pacifist 
hero. And this one in particular is just a beautifully crafted fight comic. A bit of the Silver Surfer contemplating cosmic morality and humanity, as he always does. A lot of beautifully action-packed fight sequences. And a whole lot of Loki being Loki, just trying to figure out how he can ruin Thor's day. And it's just very entertaining. <laughs> it's like a weird sci-fi superhero fantasy, and it is loads of fun. Definitely up there with just one of the most fun reads of all time. Number four, The Coming of Galactus. This one was huge. This is like equivalent to Infinity War, the movie, when it came out and everyone was just like, whoa, this is crazy. It's probably the biggest superhero story that the world had ever seen. It's the foundation that Infinity War is built on, it introduces so many new things, and literally everyone and everything in this comic book world that we've ever seen is in danger in this story. Everyone. Everything. There are cosmic forces that are literally just impossible for anyone to deal with alone. It was also one of those things that came out and everyone was like, well, where do we go from here? How do you top this? This is crazy. And that was something that Stanley and Jack Kirby were just amazing at dealing with because they would just come around and be like, hey, you don't think we can top this? What about this? And they just kept doing that and they were so good at it. And this is just one of the first instances where they were like, we are gonna go so big, bigger than we've ever gone before. And we're gonna blow your fucking minds. Number five, The Peril and the Power. Fantastic Four, number 57 through 60, 1966. So this one came pretty soon after the coming of Galactus, and as you can presume, that was a very tough act to follow. So of course, the only way to really follow Galactus is with another badass supervillain, like Doctor Doom. This is the story of Doctor Doom following around Silver Surfer, kind of trying to convince him that he's a good guy. It's kind of entertaining, kind of funny, very, very classic, you know? So he's trying to convince him. He's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm great. I'm the good guy. I'm the best. And then he just beats the ever-living shit out of him for the next, like, four issues. It's just an incredible action-packed fight comic, and it really showcases Stan Lee's operatic superhero writing at its best. It's full of Doctor Doom's bravado and grandeur and just absolute villainy. It's awesome. Number six, Spider-Man No More. Amazing Spider-Man number 50, 1967. This is one of those moments that really made Peter Parker great. He considers hanging it up, giving up the superhero shtick, because he kind of feels like he's done all that he could. He's trying to justify that He's done so much, he deserves a break. He deserves to hang it up and call it quits. He's tired of having his heroic efforts thwarted and just constantly being thrown into these terrible situations no matter how hard he tries. So he just wants to give up. He just can't do it anymore. But of course that doesn't pan out and that makes it one of Peter's greatest and strongest moments because he hangs it up and he just can't live with it. He just can't accept that he's stopping. He's just. Physically, his being will not rest until he has killed all of the evil in the world. So eventually he realizes that he just can't stop. And it's this huge moment for Peter that just changes him forever. And he realizes why he's doing what he's doing. And he is just, he hits this moment where he realizes that this is what he's supposed to be doing. And he's just going to continue to fight and save the world no matter how hard it is. And that is why I love Peter Parker. <laughs> Number seven. Parable. Silver Surfer number one and two, 1988. This is arguably like the best story Stanley has ever written. <laughs> it's not necessarily exploding with excitement and adventure, but it does have a certain level of craftsmanship that is very difficult to top. Like technically speaking, this is probably his best story he's ever written. As the title implies, the story is essentially a parable. It's got a lot of biblical lore and themes of morality and free will, and all of those wrapped up into this thrilling epic tale of Galactus. And Galactus is descending to earth very godlike dissension. And he's developing this plan that when he gets to Earth, he wants everyone, all the civilians, to worship him as God. And so the Silver Surfer comes to confront Galactus, literally rises up to confront him. And it becomes a much more adult story than just like, beat him up, fight scene, action packed, like Silver Surfer beating up Galactus. It's not really about that. It's more about the discussion and Silver Surfer trying to convince Galactus that this is a terrible idea. And the writing is just so intriguing and 
fascinating and so intelligently well written that it just had to make this list. Number eight, the final chapter. Amazing Spider-Man number 33, 1966. Some say this is the greatest Marvel comic of all time, and possibly just the greatest superhero comic in general. It's such a foundational Spider-Man story that even if you haven't read it, you've probably heard about it or you just, you probably know what it is, what it's about. Spider-Man has been crushed, he's lost all of his strength, all of his will to go on, he's just been beaten, he's defeated, and it sucks. He just can't get up, he can't even think about it, it's just like the hardest thing he could think about ever doing is just getting back up. And he does it. He just keeps going and he keeps fighting, even though it's literally killing him. It's one of those stories that rings like a Chumbawamba song, I get knocked down, but I get up again. Ain't never gonna keep me down, I get knocked down. But I get up again, and it's gonna keep me down. And it shows that heroes can get beaten down and still get back up and still keep going. And that is such a huge theme in the superhero world. But this was just like that foundational moment where it happened and it was awesome and I'm just getting misty-eyed thinking about it. This comic is basically the scene in Spider-Man Homecoming where Peter has been like crushed by the building and he's struggling to get back up and can't do it and then he's just like, come on Spider-Man, come on Spider-Man, come on Spider-Man, come on Spider-Man, and then he does it. That's, that's what this comic is. It's all of that. And it's so good! It just gets me every damn time. Number nine, This Man, This Monster. Fantastic Four, number 51, 1966. This one's all about Ben Grimm, otherwise known as The Thing. The Thing was like the perfect cookie cutter superhero. He's strong and powerful, but at a cost. At a cost that makes him a monster. Just this big, giant, misshapen rock thing. And he hates it. He hates that he has to be this monster, but he has all this power, so it's like, is it worth it? And that's kind of what this story gets into. Because what's interesting about this story is that his powers get taken from him. He loses his strength and his power, and because of that, he reverts back to his human form. So he's no longer a monster, but now he has no powers. And this other villain from the Galactus Saga comes and takes his powers for himself, so he becomes like this new thing, except he's evil. But he looks just like the thing. So he goes back to the Baxter building and convinces his teammates that it's him, and so when Ben comes around, nobody recognizes him. They're like, no, what are you talking about? The thing is right in front of me. Who are you? So he has to either accept that he's no longer a monster and has lost his family, essentially, or he has to try and regain their trust at the cost of losing his humanity, or at least what he's perceived as his humanity from the beginning. But it's just this whole inner struggle, philosophical discussion of like, what is humanity? What does it mean? Is it worth the cost? What is the cost? And it's just, it's very, very good. <laughs> and number 10, the last on this list, though certainly there are so many more, is Identity Crisis. This one is The Amazing Spider-Man number 600 from 2009. So this one's actually from the 21st century, and Stanley didn't really get that involved after the new millennium. He kind of took a step back from the comic book writing world. It was more of an executive role. He only really showed up on special occasions every once in a while. But I think, and probably many others will agree, this is his best 21st century comic out of all of them. It's just so good, so fun, so unique. It's just got a lot of interesting things about it. It's just this goofy and charming little run with Marcus Martin, and it's about Spider-Man explaining all of his personal troubles and inner turmoils to a psychiatrist. And this isn't his troubles fighting crime, fighting supervillains. It's not even his troubles as just like a person, as a human, his inner struggles in his mind. It's not even really about that. What it is about is his troubles as a fictional character who's actual literal existence is subject to the decisions that are made by his creators. And it's also kind of a funny twist that his psychiatrist is drawn to look exactly like Stan Lee. It's just kind of a fun little story that really breaks the fourth wall and is like kind of experimental, but it's just very interesting to read. It's just kind of a goofy, charming little comic. And the ending has an even bigger twist that I won't even spoil for you because you should probably just go find it and read it because it's super fun. But that's it for my list, and I'm not even scratching the surface, but I just wanted to commemorate Stan Lee and talk about some of his greatest work, give a little highlight reel, so we can all remember 
how awesome he was, which I know we will. We'll, we'll never forget what he did to us and how he really just changed all of our lives, and that's awesome. I think he lived a really long, happy, great, amazing life, and I can't expect it being any better than it was, so. That's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, and then, I don't know, comment below with your favorite Stan Lee memory, favorite Stan Lee comic. It could be a character he created, it could be something he said, if you've ever met him, anything. I don't know, I just wanna hear what you have to say. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Definitely smash that like button if you like this video and hit the little bell icon down there if you want to get a notification every time I post a video. It really helps me out. You can contribute to this channel on Patreon if you're interested. If you do, you'll be invited to our Patreon exclusive chat room and also our live stream that I'll be doing coming up pretty soon to celebrate hitting 100,000 subscribers. So thank you guys so much for supporting this channel and I hope you all have a wonderful day despite this devastating news, but that's why I wanted to make this video to look at all of the awesome things that Stanley has done and remember him for his greatness. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.